Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. The way we do that is by learning a few new words every day. And at the end of every five days, we have a quiz. Yesterday, yesterday was day number 25. Yesterday was day number 25, that means today is our quiz day, quiz number 5, which is going to be based on all the words that we learned from day 21 through 25. As I explained to you before in the, in the previous four quizzes, when I give the quizzes, I don't have the luxury of slowing down. We have to keep on going at a steady pace. Make sure that you have watched all the videos from day 21 through 25. You have learned the word, you have mastered the word, so that when I put the word on the blackboard, right, you are able to come up with the meaning right away. So here we go. Let's get going. Day 21. The very first thing we learned on day 21, 21st day was the difference between difference between uninterested and disinterested, people have a tendency of thinking that they mean the same thing. They, people have a tendency to think that they, they, they are synonyms and they use the word disinterested when they want to use, when they, when they should use the word uninterested. They use the word disinterested because they think that it's going to make them sound smart. No, they are two different words with two entirely different meanings. People who combine the two words in thinking that they are same exact meanings they're making a mistake. Disinterested means to be unbiased, to have to have no opinion or preference. To have no opinion or preference means to be disinterested. If somebody tells you, uh, your friend asks you, so which movie do you want to go? You want to go to this movie or that movie? You say, oh, I'm disinterested. I don't care. Which either one is fine with me. You are disinterested. Uninterested means you have no interest in it. Do you understand? As I gave you the example last time when we were covering the word, the example that I gave you was the example of a of a judge in a courtroom. A judge in a courtroom is suspected very much to be disinterested. The judge is suspected to be unbiased into what is going on, but the judge bloody well may not be, may, may not, bloody well may, uh, may not, uh, must not be uninterested in what is going on. He is very much interested in what's going on. At the same time, he is disinterested. That, that was it. Then we learned these two words. Proscribe and prescribe. As you can see, it's a difference of only one letter. Proscribe, P R E S C R I B, and prescribe. They are very similar words, very similar sounding words. <coughs> But the two very different meaning. To prescribe something means to to forbid it, to forbid, to prohibit. If you're prescribing something, you're saying you mustn't do it, you can't do it, it's not allowed. Let's prescribe. Prescribe has almost the opposite meaning. It means to 
to recommend. Your doctor gives you a prescription. He or she prescribes something. The doctor tells you, the doctor recommends that you should take this medicine to get better. And that's called prescribe. And the noun, of course, is prescription. That's it. That was it. Let's move on then. And then finally, on day number one, we learned this word. Sanction. As I've, as I've reminded you before many times, that during the quizzes, I do not uh, take the time to put down the pronunciation and I do not go in as much detail as I do on the ordinary day. For example, this was covered on day 21. So if you type in Kishwani prep dash vocab dash day 21, you will find the same exact word with the pronunciation written down and a little bit more detail. I don't have a luxury of doing all that right now. Sanction. The reason I wanted to cover this word is because it's a tricky word. It has two different meanings, again, depending on on how it is being used, depending on which part of, part of speech it's being used as. As a verb, to sanction something, to sanction something means to approve something. To approve something or to give permission. You're riding, you're riding a motorbike at the age of uh, such a young age. Do your parents know about it? Yes, my parents know about it and they, they sanction, it, sanction it. Meaning that yes, they are aware of it and they have given me their permission. They sanction it. If you use the same word sanction as a noun, as a noun it means a penalty that you might be imposed, a penalty imposed for on somebody for not doing something. You see, as a noun it's a penalty. If you are supposed to do something and you don't do that, if, you, if there is certain uh, agreement that you might break or certain, if you violate uh, certain laws, uh, I'm talking about sanctions that are imposed on a nation. It could be somebody or it could be some country. So if some country uh, violates international law or does not, uh, or violates an agreement that the country has signed with other countries, if the, if the country violates it, the other country might impose sanctions. Sanctions are penalties that are imposed on somebody for not doing something. In this case, not following their agreement or not doing, not, uh, not uh, observing the international laws. As you can see, two entirely different meaning. Here it is a penalty, here it is an approval. You, you sanction something means you approve of something. You impose sanction on something means you impose penalty on some. For some, for, on somebody for not doing something. That's it. That was day one, day number one, day number twenty-one, rather. Let's move on to day twenty-two. What did we learn? First word on day number twenty-two. See if I can find a better, better marker. A marker with a little bit of more oomph in it. Ah, the very first word we talk, very first word we talked about was uh, the word grave. Again, it has two meanings. Obviously, the first meaning I'm not going to waste time here uh, writing it down. You already know it. A grave is a burial place where you bury a person, uh, presumably a dead person, preferably a dead person. That's 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 a grave. I'm being silly. Of course I'm being silly, I don't care either way. I was being silly again. A grave. So that's the first meaning of the word grave. Second meaning of the word grave. So when you use it as a noun, that's a burial place. As an adjective, 
it has a different meaning. As, as an adjective, it means I'm looking for another uh, black marker is what I'm looking for, in case you're wondering what I'm doing. As a gray, as an adjective, it means something that is very important. Something that is very important. And and sometimes and, and a noun would be gravity. If someone says this is of utmost gravity, what they're saying is that this is this matter is of, is of utmost importance. And the noun there is gravity. So again, gravity has two meaning. The first meaning of the gravity we all know, which is uh, gravity as a Newton. Here, gravity means seriousness. Gravity means seriousness. That was it. That was the end of that word. The next word that we learned on day 22 was cursory. What does it mean? It's an adjective. It just means something that is hastily and superficially done. Something that is not done thoroughly. Something that is not done thoroughly. Not done thoroughly. Cursor. So if you're doing something uh, in a rush and you're doing it very superficially without paying much attention, that thing is done in a cursory manner. And the adverb would be, adverb would be, cursorily. Cursorily. You have to slow down when you're saying this word, otherwise you'll mess it up. Cursorily. So it's something that is done superficially and hastily is said to be said to have been done cursorily. So your parents or your teacher might advise you, don't do it cursorily, pay some attention, slow down, don't be hasty, don't do it superficially. You're doing it cursorily. Sometimes students have a have a have a tendency to read a question on the exam cursorily. In any of this exam, if you're taking the GRE, Gmail, SAT or TOEFL, reading the question cursorily is not a wise, smart way of saving time. There are smart ways of saving time on the exam, and then there are not so smart ways. Reading the problem cursorily is not a very smart way of trying to save time, to economize on time, that is. That was the end of the word cursory. one that we learned was procrastinate which is a very straightforward and simple simple word procrastinate means to put off uh, to delay to postpone to dilly dally we already know that and then we learned the word dilatory the difference here is that procrastinate is a verb dilatory is an adjective but it means the same thing it means to be tardy it means to be procrastinating means to to uh, to not be punctual prompt or on time to not be punctual or on time so if you if you're being dil dilatory being dilatory if you're being dilatory you're procrastinating or if you're procrastinating you're being dilatory you're being impunctual you're being tardy and the word is dilatory Finally, on day number 22, the last word we learned was, as you can see, I'm right now covering all the words cursorily. The reason I'm doing it cursorily because this is a quiz. We're not here to learn the words. Presumably, you have already learned the word by watching the uh, 
all these videos from day 1 through day 25. For example, all of these words, if you want to learn them thoroughly, you type in the, this tag, Keshwani Prep dash vocab dash day 22. Type in the tag in the, in, 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 in the search and that uh, video will pop right up. And you learn the words before you take the quiz. The last one was sedentary. Sedentary, which means, let's put down pronunciation, sed -ten -ter -ry. which means sitting down all the time. Sitting down. So if your job is of such a nature that you sit at the desk all day, it doesn't involve much physical activity as opposed to back in the old days when people worked in the factory which involves moving about things and lifting things and, and doing physical stuff or our forefathers when they worked in the farms that was a very physical labor uh, as opposed to that these days most people work in offices and the jobs are very sedentary and their lifestyle is very sedentary they go to the office, they come out, they get in the car, they come home and they sit on the couch. Such a lifestyle is said to be sedentary. It involves sitting down a lot of the time. Let's move on to day number 23. That was the end of that. The very first word we learned on day number 23 was the word ulterior and when you hear the word ulterior usually it is used with the word motive people talk about ulterior motive the reason I wanted to cover it cover this word actually two reasons why I wanted to cover this word were are were rather people think that the word ulterior for some reason people think that the word ulterior means some other well, that is correct. It does mean some other, but that is not the full extent of the meaning of the word. They're, they're leaving something out very important. They're leaving out the nuance of the word. It does mean some other, but that's not all of it. The second reason I wanted to cover this word is because of its spelling. People have a tendency to misspell it. I don't know why, but they, they tend to spell ulterior with the word A, with, with, the, letter, with, the, with the letter A for some reason. When they hear the word ulterior, they want to spell it with an A. It is to be spelled with an U. And it means, ulterior means, a motive, a motive, ulterior means, let's see, how did I put it here? Ulterior motive means, a motive, some other motive, that is not being disclose or divulge a motive that is not being discussed uh, uh, disclosed or divulge most of the time intentionally for the purpose of deceiving the other person so if somebody has an if you say that somebody has an ulterior motive you're not just saying that the person has some other motive you're saying more than that you're saying that he has some other motive that he is not sharing with me and again, the example that I gave you, if you watch the video day 23, the example that I gave you was, if you're driving down on a highway in the middle of the night and your car breaks down and somebody pulls behind to help you, and if you begin to wonder immediately, what is he up to? Is, does he really want to help me or does he have something else in mind? Well, as soon as you start asking yourself that question, you're asking yourself, does he have an ulterior motive? In other words, does he have a motive? Does he have something in mind? that he is not sharing with me. He is pretending to help me change my tire. That is his uh, motive that he, sh that he shows on surface. Uh, that's the motive that he discloses. But does he have another motive that he is not disclosing with me? Something else has he in mind. That's some other motive that he is not disclosing with you. Something other, some other motive that he is not divulging. That motive is called an ulterior motive. That's it. So we learned the word ulterior and we learned the word divulged. 
I will simply means not to disclose, not to make public. The next next word we learned was circumspect. Circumpex, circumspect is made up of two parts. The prefix circum, which means around, as in circumference, which is where the word circle and circumference come, for, come, come from, it means around. And spect means to look. Spect is where, is where, is, is where the words such as uh, spectators or spectacles come from. I hope I did a good job of spectacles. I'm going to do it again. Spectacles, it's just a fancy way of saying eyeglasses. Uh, so, Specs means to look. Circumspect literally therefore means to look around. To look around as in to be careful, to be prudent, to be careful, to be prudent, to be cautious. Oh, I'm kind of doing a very lousy job of writing things down. To be careful, to be prudent, to be cautious, to be wary, to be watchful, and then of course the detours. Do you understand? Circumspect, to look around, to be literally means to, to look around as in to be careful to be aware of your surrounding the last word the last word that we learned on day number 23 was oxymoron oxymoron is where you use two words together that contradict each other where two words are used together that contradict. How do you spell contradict? Oh, jeez. Oh, that's the fun part of standing here and making a fool of myself. Contradict. There was a time when I knew how to spell, spell words and then they invented the bloody spell check and from that point on everything went down the tube contradict C N O T R A where two words are used together that contradict each other or two, two incongruous words used together. Two incongruous words being used together. Incongruous simply means they do not go together. Congruous means they go together. They, they adjust nicely with each other. Incongruous means they do not belong with each other. And we talked about a couple of examples. Uh, one talks about, uh, one talks about uh, this expression you may have heard of. Deaf. From deaf we have deafening silence. Well, if it's a silence, how can it possibly be deafening? It has no sound. And yet the expression is deafening silence. Sometimes you hear uh, this expression deafening silence in the in the courtroom drama, where something something uh, important has happened. Something uh, when you hear uh, reach a climax, maybe a verdict is given, or maybe a prosecution or somebody produces some piece of evidence. And all of a sudden there is this deafening, or maybe a witness comes forward out of the blue, and after that you have this silence that falls on the court. And it is described as deafening silence because it is so conspicuous, it is so profound. 
and the expression is deafening silence. Uh, sometimes people hear about, uh, people talk about generic brand. And I talk about this word generic in the in the day 24. We'll talk about it. So I'll do it right now. Generic simply means it carries no brand. Generic means not specific. General. Generic means not specific or general. So if something is not specific, something is general. So generic means carrying no brand. That's what the word generic means. Generic generic literally means having no name or no brand or no trademark. Well, if something has no name. How can the bloody thing have be, be generic brand? The generic brand expression that people use is incongruous. People go, people go in the store and they ask for a generic brand of cigarette. But there is no such thing as a generic brand. If it were generic, it wouldn't carry a brand. And if it had a brand, the bloody thing wouldn't be generic. But that's, that's how it is. The last example I gave you was... Uh, uh, this example, jumbo shrimp, as I told you before, for some strange and inexplicable reason, American, Americans are simply fascinated and mesmerized by this notion of a shrimp being jumbo. I have yet to figure that out why, but they are. They're absolutely fascinated by it. They're absolutely uh, mesmerized by this, by this concept of shrimp being a jumbo. They talk about it all the time, jumbo shrimp, they will tell you. If you ask them, was they give me, give me a definition of an oxymoron, that's jumbo shrimp. Anyway. And then the last example I gave you of an oxymoron was a, entrapped chicken. Entrapped means, entrapped means brave, courageous. And chickens, for some reason, some in, again, for some in, inexplicable reason, have a reputation of being cowardly. So I gave you the example that when I'm playing with my kid and sometimes I tease him and I say, you big chicken, you're a chicken. And he turns to me and says, yes, I may be a chicken, but I'm an entrapped one. You understand? Entrapped simply means to be brave. Entrapped chicken, therefore, is an oxymoron. Day number 24. The penultimate day. Penultimate day. Penultimate means second to the last. Day 24. Well, the very first which we covered in day 24 was in fact entrapped, which means to be brave, to be courageous, to be bold, and finally to be valiant. So we learn one more word out of it. The word is valiant. Valiant means exactly all of this thing. Valiant or intrepid means to be brave, to be courageous, to be bold. And if you're valiant, if one is valiant, one is said to have, one is said to have valor. Valor simply means having courage, having bravery. So valor means bravery. Not brave, but bravery. Courage. Boldness, so valor means bravery, because these are all nouns, you see? Courage, boldness, and so forth. And after that we learn one more word. After that we learn one more word, which I'm going to put here, which is a synonym, which, which we should continue. The word was... Doubting. Well, I can put it right here. And it's pronounced Doubting. The reason I wanted to cover the word Doughty is because for some reason, well, I not, not for some reason, I know the reason obviously, because, because it sounds like the word doubt and therefore people have a tendency sometimes to think that the word Doughty means having doubt or possessing doubt. 
it means no such thing. But the word doughty is a synonym of all of these words. So if somebody asks you some, if somebody asks you to give synonyms of brave, the synonym of brave would be courageous, bold, valiant, intrepid, and doughty. You see, all of these six words are synonyms of each other. I don't know if there are six or not. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All of these six words are synonyms of each other. Brave. Courageous, bold, intrepid, doughty, valiant. There you go, I got all six of them. Let's move on then. So if the, the word doughty has nothing to do with having doubts. The question is, does there exist a word in English language which does there exist a word in English language which means, which actually means to be full of doubt? And the answer is yes. I need to raise it. The next word that we learned, which I left it here so that you can make a contrast to these two words. The next word that we learned was dubious. Now dubious means this word. Oh, sorry, dubious means what most people think this word means. But these two words are not synonym of each other. As I told you before, doughty means to be brave. Brave. And dubious means to be, to be full of doubt not I do not know how to spell doubt which I should not make too much fuss about because I do not know how to spell any word that for that matter so that does to be full of doubt well that's how I have spelled here in my notes I'm not sure if it's the right spelling doubt to be full of doubt if something is questionable, tau, T O U B T. Yes, it is the right spelling. To be uncertain about, it tells me. To be full of doubt, to not be certain. About something. So if you say that somebody has a dubious character or dubious past, what you're saying is that the person has a questionable past. They have done something in the, in the past which one wonders about. The very last word that I covered last on day number 24 was the word which, which we already talked about was generic. One more time, generic means not specific. Not having name or rather proper name. As in not having proper name as in not having a brand name. You see? Not having not not having or not carrying not carrying brand name or, ju or it just means general general do you understand? why didn't you come uh, to, to, to work tomorrow? because uh, I was busy it's just a generic answer it's a very general answer it doesn't tell me anything I was so, why didn't you come, why weren't you here, why weren't you here yesterday? Oh, I had to, I had to be somewhere else. Of course you were somewhere else. That's a generic answer. If that answer is not very specific. It doesn't tell you anything. That answer is very generic. You can use it in that, in that context or people talk about something having, being a generic uh, object, as in it carries no name. So people go to uh, buy medicine and they buy generic, uh, they, they, they talk about generic brand, hence the oxymoron. Uh, what they mean by generic brand is that what they're trying to say is that give me the one that is cheapest and usually the one that, usually the one that is cheapest is the one that carries no brand so they talk about generic they, they buy generic uh, cigarettes and a, a generic cigarette simply means that particular cigarette has no brand name and therefore it's the cheapest one last last Day, day number 25, the very first word we covered was super 
Super serious. And again, if you want to learn the proper pronunciation of it, go and watch the video, which is where I put down the pronunciation. Super serious simply means. I should not try to write capital letters because it slows me down and then I forget how to spell the bloody thing. Arrogant. Cocky. Haughty. This word is pronounced. Haughty. And then after that we learn a whole bunch of words starting with the starting with the prefix ego. And they are all synonyms. And there were seven of them. Let's see if I can squeeze them here. I should have put all of this here somewhere. Here we go. Let's start from here. Ego. All of these words have a prefix of ego which simply means, the words would simply mean uh, being self-centered, or being arrogant, or being haughty, or being conceited. Well, here's a good word, conceited. Let's see if I can squeeze that in there somewhere. C-O-N C-E-I-T-E-D, conceited. Supercilious means to be conceited, to be arrogant, to be cocky, to be haughty. To be very proud of yourself, excessively proud of yourself. Okay, so now that we got that out of the system, let's take this, let's take care of the seven words that we learned with the prefix ego. Egocentric, egoist, ego maniac, ego maniac, ego. Egomaniacal, egotist, ego, egotist, 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 egotistic, and egotistical. There are seven words, and they all mean the same thing. They all mean the same thing. Egocentric, egoist, egomaniac, egomaniacal, egotist, egotistic, egotistical. That's it. The very last word we learned on day number 25 was, I need the room so I need to erase it. Let's learn it here. Let's put it here. Efface, which means, which means to Wipe out or to erase. That's what the that's what the word efface literally means. If to efface means to wipe something out or to erase it. And from that we have an expression. From from that we have the expression self effacing. Self effacing is an antonym of all of these words. If you're self-effacing, what it means literally is that you do not want to be conspicuous. You keep a very low profile. You come across as a very modest person. You come across as a very, uh, very, uh, not arrogant person. No, very not arrogant person. That was a brilliant way to finish the sentence. You come across as a very modest person, very, uh, very low profile person. You do not want to be conspicuous. You do not come across as, oh, look at me, I'm so much better than you. You do not come across as cocky. You do not come across as arrogant person. Very modest, a very low profile person is said to be self-effacing, which is a very different person than a person who is described by using any of this adjective, supercilious, conceited, arrogant, cocky, haughty, egocentric, egoist, egomaniac, egomaniacal, egotist, egotistical, and ego, egotistic, egotistical and egotistic. That was the end of the day, day 25 and that is the end of our quiz for day number 25. I'll see you tomorrow on day 26 and we'll pick up again 
start new uh, learn few few new words uh, tomorrow every day we learn few new words okay i hope you find it helpful i i, I hope you found it helpful i hope you're finding it helpful uh, keep up with it learn few new, few new words every day and your vocabulary will expand it does require it does require effort and it does require time it's a very time consuming process but don't look at it as, don't turn it into a chore as i told you many times before it should be fun if you need uh, help, if you're preparing for any of these tests, GRE, GMAT, SAT, or TOEFL, and if you're looking for a private tutor, that's, that is what I do. I provide private tutoring, a face-to-face -face tutoring, or I tutor over the internet via Skype or over the telephone. Uh, if you need help uh, in your preparation for any of these tests, send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to help you out in whatever way that I can. You can go to any of these website addresses and send me an email from there, or you can go to keshwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Alright, thanks.